So clinical clue, clues to heart disease in the newborn. I was just going to run up a, a case presentation and then talk about why this actually matters. Um, and any uh, interaction is very welcome. So uh, we're thinking here about a two-week-old infant um, who um, comes to see you because they're not feeding. Um, pregnancy complicated by maternal di diabetes, late booking, Pacifica family, fourth child, um, experienced mum, sensible mum, um, near-term baby, good birth weight, good APGARs. Breastfeeding was going well pretty early on, but just not focused over the last week. And the current weight is uh, 3,700, which I guess, is that okay for a two-week infant? Slightly less than birth weight. All those saying yes, hands up. No, some hands up. Yeah, it's kind of marginal, isn't it? It's, you'd be slightly concerned. You'd expect um, that um, you would have regained your birth weight by two weeks. Now, this baby's just two weeks, so maybe, maybe not. Um, and um, it's normal to lose 5 to 10% of birth weight, uh, of, of weight after birth. Um, and then, of course, once you start to put on weight, you should be putting on about 180 grams or more um, each week. So as I said, experienced um, mother, no problems with breastfeeding supply. The story is, um, in a poorly spelt slide there, baby tires rapidly, gets short of breath, has to stop, seems hungry and is irritable. So that kind of story about feeding, um, a really important point, I remember when I started training, I, it was drilled into me by several um, senior pediatricians that actually you have to take a clear history about babies that don't feed properly, and, and if you can, watch them feed, because there are a whole bunch of reasons why babies may not feed properly. Um, and if we just move on here, I guess this is a list of them. Babies who aren't interested, they might have a systemic illness, they could have sepsis, I guess. Oftentimes you'd be thinking of neurological developmental problems. Babies who cough and splatter, they might have a swallowing problem, so it could be a neurological issue. They might have an airway problem, um, particularly upper airway problem. But if they're breathing too fast and they're hungry, it's either a respiratory problem or it's a heart problem. And in fact, that sort of story is typical for a heart problem, for cardiac failure. Wants to feed, hungry, irritable, has a few sucks on the breath, can't catch his breath, um, pulls off and, and stops feeding. So baby uh, strips off and there's no cyanosis. Maybe a bit pale though. Respiratory rate 70, there's no indrawing. Looks a bit weak but comfortable with breathing. 70, is that a normal respiratory rate? All those in favour, yes, normal, hands up. Not normal, hands up. Well done, okay. Late Saturday afternoon, but we're doing well. So um, less than 60 is normal. Actually, it's unusual to be over 50 if you're asleep and settled. The problem is when most kids see you, they're not asleep and settled. They've just had their top pulled off and they're screaming and upset, so it makes it a bit difficult. The typical story with heart failure is that the increased respiratory rate is not associated with a whole lot of respiratory effort. So the kids with bronchiolitis that you see, they've got indrawing, they're breathing fast, they've clearly got a respiratory problem. Typical kid with heart failure is breathing fast. You wouldn't notice it unless you counted quite often. Once the heart failure gets really severe, sure they'll have indrawing and stuff, but usually at presentation they don't. So we have a listen to the chest, there's a heart murmur, okay, cardiac. Um, the liver's three centimetres below the costal margin. My uh, friend Ross gave me this slide um, showing how you measure the liver or palpate the liver, but I'm sure all you folk know that. Um, I just thought I needed some pictures in the slides, otherwise I'd get marked down. Um, pulses, baby's quite tachycardic, break your Pulses are not that easy to feel, and femoral pulses are really hard to feel. Probably couldn't feel them. So any guesses for diagnoses here? 
coarctation of the aorta, well done. And with a murmur, maybe a VSD or aortic stenosis or something as well, perhaps. So heart murmur, hepatomegaly, very likely to be cardiac, absent or reduced femoral pulses in the neonate, same day paediatric assessment. Don't send them to the outpatient clinic. Am I allowed to say this, Ted? Don't send them to Auckland Heart Group, send them to the hospital. Okay, sorry. Um, so same day paediatric assessment, if the paediatric registrar says I'll send them to the outpatient clinic, just say no, don't do that. They need to go to the hospital. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about um, a coarctation with a ventricular septal defect. And you'll see on this diagram here, if I can point that with my red arrows, most of the blood flow is going through the lungs. There's not a whole lot of a reason why blood flow is going to go around the body in this situation. There's a ventricular septal defect. It's hard to get blood around the body. The aorta's significantly obstructed. So these babies present with low cardiac output and heart failure, just like this guy. And there's the chest x-ray, heart's a bit big, lungs are wet, over-circulated. Just a little refresher here, symptoms and signs of heart failure in infants, breathlessness, often effortless tachypnea as I said, poor feeding, tired and breathless, poor weight gain, decreased caloric intake, increased caloric output, tachycardia, hepatomegaly, plus or minus a heart murmur. So um, this baby had cardiac surgery two days later, uneventful recovery, likely normal life expectancy. So not a particularly common thing in general practice, so why am I bothering you guys with this? Um, the, this is the diagnosis of fixable critical heart disease in New Zealand, and by fixable mostly I mean coarctation and transposition. Those are the two big um, groups of patients in this, this thing here. And so you can see down the bottom there we've got um, 2006 to 2008, 2009 to 2011, and 2012 to 2014. There's an increasing rate of prenatal diagnosis, but there's still half of the babies in 2012 to 14 that were diagnosed after birth. And there's still 16% that were diagnosed after hospital discharge. So they're gonna be coming your way. And if we look at the transpositions, they present blue. The prenatal diagnosis is getting better and better. It's around 75% now. This last bar there is 2015. But the coarctation's not. It's hard to diagnose prenatally. And if we look at the perioperative mortality in this group, nobody dies after an operation for transposition, and almost nobody dies after an operation for coarctation unless they've got comorbidity. But about 20% of babies with coarctation in New Zealand die in infancy, and that's because they don't get a diagnosis until they die or until they get very sick and then die. So those di deaths, about half of them occurred, were, were, were diagnosed at post-mortem. And it's not just death, it's neurological damage that sits underneath that as well for the survivors. So in summary, signs of heart disease in the newborn, poor feeding, weight gain, unexplained tachypnea, hepatomegaly, heart murmur plus or minus, reduced or absent femoral pulses, um, again, plus or minus if you've got a coarctation. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tom. I have one question uh, here uh, with a delightful little finger slip. Um, uh, the question reads, would ventricular septal defect be picked up antenatally by feral ultrasound? Yeah, not, not by feral ultrasound and not by fetal ultrasound usually either. Um, VSDs are about the least likely things to be picked up, so if the connections of the heart are abnormal, um, fairly likely. If one chamber is hypoplastic, very likely. Almost all the kids in New Zealand with, with single ventricle, hypoplastic left heart or other, other problems get diagnosed prenatally. Um, but ventricular septal defects, no, unless they're associated with tetralogy or something else. 
um, then they're not likely to be picked up. Thank you. Thank you.